Okay, dudes and dudettes, welcome back. This is the one and only Sugi Strategy here, and today I'm starting a new video series where I will be teaching you how to use the Warcraft 3 World Editor. And this is aimed for the people who are new to Reforge, or maybe you played the game back in the day, but never touched the World Editor. So in this video series, I will be teaching you the very basic stuff, and later on, we're gonna be doing a bit of the harder stuff, like triggers and cinematics and stuff like that. But I really wanna start out with the very simple and the basics in this series, so people don't feel really intimidated intimidated by the editor. I have to say it's pretty easy to use. I think there's a lot of ease of access and there's a lot of cool things that you can do with the editor when you really compare it to many of the other uh, editors, let's say Age of Empires editor or Starcraft for that matter. There's a lot of things that the world editor can do, whatever it's for private use or for the public use. So in this video, we're going to be looking into these things. So we're going to be looking into how to make units fly, how to basically increase sizes of units, do that's, all this stuff, and we're gonna be using also floating techniques and scaling value, selection value, and stuff like that. So let's start out with do that's. First thing you wanna do is open a new map. It can be an existing one or totally new. And we have the palette system, obviously. There's hotkeys for that. I'm gonna make a separate video of the hotkeys. It's very important, makes things very easy. So you just hit the D. And you get to the do that palette. And we have a banner here. And we're gonna go to zoom in here. So first thing I wanna show you guys that you can actually increase the sizes or decrease the sizes of these things. So there's two ways to do that. You can hit enter. And you can change rotation here. You can uh, change the scales of it. Uh, the skin system, don't touch that. That is still very outdated right now. Basically, one of the easiest ways to change the direction is select the do that and then hit control and click to a certain direction. And this will basically change the direction. This is much easier than putting the input uh, numbers there for direction and you can just circulate it on the, any direction you really want to. And this is very important for many map makers. The second thing I want to look into is actual size of it. So we can see it's very tall right now. We can actually change the size to go up. So we can make it very, very long. We can also make it wider and you can do these. There's four keys. End and page down will decrease the sizes on different dimensions and page up and home will change the directions to other sizes. So this is a very, very nice tool and fast and easy way to basically change the size. However, with every given doodad or uh, destructible in the doodad palette, we'll have a minimum scale and maximum scale. So in case this is not small enough, what we're trying to have, or not big enough, we have to create a custom do that. So we go into the object editor, that is F6, and we go to the do that palette, and we're gonna create a new banner. So we go into Barons, which is the, well, location where it is. We're gonna use the cactus, this is from the environment tab. We're gonna name it cactus, test, hit OK, and the ID, don't worry about it, hit OK. And here we can see all of these random numbers and uh, fields, and you may be, whoa, this is very confusing. So first thing we want to do is variation one, which means that there's only one type of a cactus that can spawn. And there's, luckily in the old editor, you didn't have uh, a search field, so we can put the cactus we're gonna choose Barons here, and we find the cactus test. Okay, well, we we run into the first problem. So in the new editor in Reforged, there's not a cactus model yet. So we're gonna be using something else, just for the sake of it. Um, cactus variation two, great. So here we have our cactus, we can select it and uh, pushing Alt down, we can click it and we can move it like this way. Or you can just drag it with your mouse. Okay, these are two ways to move it. Um, and as I said, control, hold control down to rotate it. So we, we're gonna delete this one because it's on. So we want a really big cactus for whatever reason that may be. 
Um, so we're going to be going into the fields. A maximum scale, uh, there's an editor tab, maximum scale down below. It means that this is the highest size when you're going to be putting it. You're going to put 5. Minimum scale is going to be 0 0.5. So when we are choosing the cactus test and we are putting it here, it's always going to be different size, okay? Because we have the maximum and we have the minimum scale. If the numbers are the same, um, Control Z is by the way the undo button. Undo button going to be fine also here. So let me show you. So when the numbers are same, like let's say one then the cactus is always the same size. And you can always choose the individual cactus to be whatever size you want to by the trick that we just used earlier. And but let's let's for the sake of it, I'm gonna put the maximum scale five. And once again, uh, page up makes it bigger. <laughs> okay, this looks pretty ridiculous. So we're gonna be making it wider. Oh, that looks nice. Uh, obviously, the textures don't look so amazing when you once you kind of like make certain things bigger or smaller. So one of the things we're gonna be showing you next is how to make doodads float. And the one thing uh, in this which we're gonna be talking about in future videos is the trees and destructibles things, which are things that you can interact inside the game. The props it might be like this big right now, but units can move through it because it is an environment uh, do that. Do that's are something that you can pass through uh, most of the time, depending on what they are based on. As for uh, destructibles, you can't go past them. But you like, for, for example, we, we see that uh, because it's an environment thing, you can move it into uh, certain parts. But uh, we have this thing, we have these four big cactus things here. But this one small one looks dumb, and I don't want to see it. So one of the things we can do is make it go underground or float. So we hit Control and Page Down. We can make it go underground, but we can just hide it uh, for uh, aesthetic purposes. We hide the small one. So this is the look we want to go for, so to show that it's underground. When we hit Control and Page Up, we can move it to floating. This is something that you, maybe if there's a do that that has an animation, uh, you want to do this for whatever reason. We can like move it here and maybe it's, maybe it's like, a, I don't know. There are tools that have standing animation, I think in the Plex Citadel or something like that. Let's see, um, things that floating already. Yeah, here, no, that's not the one. Like this one, that is floating, things like these. You, somebody could technically create an animation uh, for the cactus that it would have the same type of an animation as this one. These frogs even can be uh, put down like this and you can see there's levitation or maybe there's an earthquake effect that you want to create to create for immersion. Um, stuff like that. Another example, I created another... Um, actually, it's around here. So I had I made a ziggurat, which is normally a building, but you can change uh, any type of a duda to use any type of a model, whatever it's a unit or a building or a spell effect even. And we can like ziggurat has like these really, really cool tentacles and we can like make it go underground again and have these tentacles, uh, you know, coming out from the ground. This is also another an aesthetic purpose. Or maybe you want to create a floating ziggurat and that's it. That's when you bring it up and this is an effect you want to have on the map. So that's how the floating system works. And then somebody, obviously somebody is asking, well, what about units? So I made a, a priest unit, which is flying above ground for the sake of purpose here, sorcerer. And you can see they're floating ground. How do we make a floating or flying unit out of a normal unit that is normally not flying? So we go to Object Editor, Units tab, New Custom Unit. And you can choose Priest and we're gonna just call him Test. Click OK, i.e. OK. And here we have um, in the very top, or not necessarily top, on the middle, we have the Movement tab. 
And the height is um, the maximum height, which is the normal height that they are on when they are on the map. So we're gonna be putting 150. The height minimum means that when there's an ability casted to them, like a snare, that kind of makes them go lower uh, on, you know, on the ground. So we're gonna put like 90, which is pretty average. And how do we find the custom money unit that we just created? We go to unit palette, that is you, humans, melee, custom. Here we have our test unit and we can see it. It's on the ground. But even though uh, the unit is floating, it doesn't mean that it's considered as an air unit. So one of the things we're gonna be talking in a future video is basically the target system. So in the combat system, the units are targeted as certain things. You can see that there are certain abilities that you can't cast on heroes, and it says you in game must be targeted on a unit, must be targeted ground, must be targeted air. So the unit can, uh, you know, it may be looking to be on air, but melee units still can hit it, long as the combat system is not targeted as air. So we have to make it air, and now when it's in game, uh, the people will be treating it as an air unit. That is very important uh, caveat here. The second thing also is, is the movement type. So once again, it might be on the air, but it cannot go through cliffs or trees uh, if it's uh, set as a foot, uh, uh, a foot unit. Movement type has to be flying if you want it to go over trees and cliffs. So technically you could have a unit that is floating, but it can't go over trees. That is something that you might want to have. It just whatever the purpose is. That's how you do a flying unit. And as a last thing of this video, now that we have gone through, and in case you want to make, by the way, that our test unit bigger, once again, we go into, let's see where it is. There's a lot of fields in the system and all of these things are, it's very on the top, right? So here we have the scaling value we want to make a big priest unit and now we <laughs> now we have a quite big one. So that's how you change the size of the unit. There can be no va random vari variations on the units themselves. That is only for doodads. Selection scale means when you're clicking, choosing the character with your mouse, the selection scale can be really, really small for big units. So make sure the selection scale matches up to the scaling value, not one to one ratio. It can be, now it's one, so we might wanna have the ring be four times larger or something like that. And that's how um, the selection scale system works. So make sure always to increase the selection scale because it will be very hard to target the unit itself. You can do troll stuff like making it 0 0.01, which makes it almost impossible uh, to click inside the game if you want to target spells at a certain unit. Uh, that can be certain types of click games or, you know, very, very detailed stuff. And as a last thing uh, about those uh, things we were looking earlier, um, where is it again? Where did we put it? Yes, here. So... We talked about the doodads. The doodad thing is good that you can also put spell effects as environment. So here is a fairy fire as a ability by the truth of the talent. You might want to have these uh, butterflies flying around the tree. This is a very nice aesthetic thing. Once again, we can raise uh, the, uh, the butterflies into the top of the uh, tree. This is a very, very nice uh, spell effect. We can also change the color of this set ability. So we go into the doodad palette. We have the fairy thing what I created here. And here we have the model file where you change the spell effect. It can be also this a flame thing you know, on the tree. Uh, but let's not let's not use that. Let's um let's see how much no, well, that looks very nice, for example. Um Let's actually make, we can make a ton of it. So look at that. Um, that is a one, uh, you wanna use these spell effects to create um, different things. There are certain uh, spell effects that can be changed in color. That is a very uh, set thing, set form of things. So we have fairy fire, I made it just red. So we have this red, blue, green system. 
Let's make it green back again, or make it green. So this goes a bit more zero. Yeah, you make it green. That's pretty cool looking. And these are effects that you can have on the map. And there's this couple of ideas what you can do with the world editor. There's a lot of things you can do. And we haven't even touched the surface. And let's see how that looks. Well, it's uh, apparently the water is glitching. But um, in case you want to have a certain new things that I want you, you want me to show you or teach you how to do in the world editor, leave a comment down below. And I will include it in the next video that will have same type of a theme. And maybe these videos will be a bit shorter in the next one. Maybe I have less subjects or something like that. But the idea is to really teach you guys how to do the basic stuff. Next time, we're probably going to be looking into loading screens, minimaps. And we're going to be going through the hotkey system as well. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.